Is there a blockbuster trade incoming? And is Miami involved with it? We'll break all of it down and talk about it here on Heat Digest. Now, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all things Miami Heat. Now, let's get to it. First things first, what massive trade is incoming? Who's involved? What's going on? Well, in recent days, DeMar DeRozan's preferred landing destinations, if traded, have been made public. The Athletic tweeted this on December 1st, just three days ago. The Miami Heat listed as the number one preferred landing location, and the New York Knicks as the second preferred landing location for the star guard in Chicago if he were to be moved. Now, what does this mean? All this means is that if DeMar DeRozan were to be traded by the current organization he plays for, the Chicago Bulls, he would prefer to land in one of two spots, the Miami Heat or the New York Knicks. Now, does this mean that either of those teams have any remote interest in him as a player in acquiring him in the next few weeks, days, or months? No, that's not what this means. All this means is that DeMar is more than open to landing with either of these organizations. This is nothing coming from the Miami Heat or the New York Knicks organization. This is strictly coming from DeMar and the Chicago Bulls. Now... If I, let's talk about the Bulls first before we get into the Miami Heat. The Chicago Bulls are in shambles. Total, complete shambles. Their number one option, who is, I can make an argument that it's uh, DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine is not happy in Chicago. He hasn't been happy for this entire season, it seems like. I know it's early. We're only about 19 to 20 games in, depending on the team. He hasn't been, not been happy, and his play has shown it. He's not happy when he's on the court. He's not happy involved with this organization. Also, he's been banged up, missing games, coming out of games early due to small injuries, and it's really, it's really affecting the way he's playing, along with mentally and emotionally not enjoying the Chicago Bulls organization. Now, if Zach Levine does not have a trade market due to the fact that he is injured, also the Chicago Bulls not wanting to move him because he can be a franchise cornerstone for really any organization in the NBA because he's such a good player at such a young age and he's freakishly athletic and he brings a good market with him due to the fact that he's gone to these dunk contests and he's performed exceptionally well and he's a walking highlight reel. DeMar DeRozan, these are his stats. He's, he's, a, he's a number one guy with these stats, especially on a team such as Chicago. And with Zach Levine not being as present as he can be, these are number one guy numbers. 21.5 points, three rebounds, just under five assists at 4.9, along with shooting 45%. Now, DeMar DeRozan is 34 years of, uh, years of age, and he's also in 19 games played this season. He's averaging 36 minutes played, which is absolutely insanity for someone at such an age playing for such a bad team. It's not resulting in a lot of wins and it's not his fault. It would be unfair to say it was. Now Chicago is entirely behind the eight ball and whether or not they move Zach Levine, whether or not they move DeMar DeRozan, we will have to watch, wait, and find out because no one can really predict that as Chicago, I don't even know if Chicago has an idea of what they are going to do or what they should do with Having the record they they currently have, being sub-500, still very early, yes, but nothing up to this point in the season has looked as if the things are going to make a big turnaround at any point soon, even regardless of this season. And now you have not only your number one option, your true number one option, and Zach Levine, who has already vocalized his unhappiness and does not want to play in Chicago, you now have your second option, your your number two guy, and DeMar DeRozan, who's not only a great player on the court, but he's also been there for a while, not in the sense of being in Chicago, but in the NBA, two championships in the playoffs, playing against people like LeBron, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Paul George, you know, all these elite level players in high intensity and in big situations. Now he's even vocalizing. He's not saying, I want out, but he's saying, hey, if you're thinking about blowing up this team and this organization, make, let's try to get me to land in one of my preferred landing spots. 
It's not good for Chicago right now, and it looks like it. Miami might be a part of this. Miami might be able to help out, but should they? Now that's what we're going to talk about. Should Miami do it? Should they make a trade, may even just propose a trade to Chicago? Should they do it? In my honest opinion, I think no. I don't think we get involved in this trade for either player, Zach Levine or DeMar DeRozan. But we're going to focus on DeMar because Zach Levine's trade market with his contract are very, very small due to the fact that he has a lot of money being owed to him, not just this year, but in the coming years, along with seems kind of sour. In that, and I don't mean that negatively on Zach Levine as a person, as a whole. I just mean in the current state of him playing for Chicago, for that organization, he doesn't seem very happy. And because he doesn't seem happy, along with the little injuries he's had here and there, I'm not arguing that he's been healthy his full season because he hasn't been. It, it seems like that has really affected the way he's played, the effort that he's put forth in playing, and just his overall mood and his actions following games and con uh, press conferences and questions revolving around his future with the Bulls. Now, Miami. I've showed you Lamar. Or Lamar. I've showed you Demar stats: twenty-one and a half, three rebounds, five assists, shooting forty-five percent. Now, those are great numbers. And in Chicago, he's playing thirty-six minutes a game on average. And for a thirty-four-year-old NBA player, that, those aren't light numbers. Like I don't even believe Bam out of Bios playing an average of thirty-six minutes a game. And Bam's significantly younger than DeMar. Now, now, for Miami, this was the big thing. This is the big thing. If we give up DeMar, we have to, if we go get DeMar, I should say, we have to give something up. Because we're not going to be able to just go, it's not going to be like, hey, can we just have them? That's not how it works, unfortunately. Now, I will mention this before I get into the, our, our depth chart in Miami and what we could possibly give up to then get him where the depth and the how many players we would have at the one and the two or even the three with DeMar and depending on what we would give up. DeMar has one year left on his contract before he becomes a restricted free or excuse me, an unrestricted free agent at the end of this upcoming season. So this is what I'm showing you. This is our depth chart as of this morning, December fourth, two thousand and twenty three. It's not looking too good for the Miami Heat. Tyler Hero has not played in two weeks, and he probably will not play for at least another week or two with the ankle injury he got against the Timberwolves, I believe, or was it the Milwaukee Bucks? I apologize, it's slipping my mind. But then let's just... The point is Tyler Hero has not played in a while. He probably will not play for a little bit longer. Uh, Josh Richardson, he's a day-to-day -day decision. He's got, he just came back from injury. He go he, now he's right back on the injury report. R.J. Hampton is going to be out for at least a couple weeks, if not a few months, a lot with a knee injury. And then Drew Smith will be out for the remainder of the season, unless we make the playoffs in a deep run. He might be able to come back around then, but not very likely. The point is, we will have to play a season, a regular season without another one of our guards. Now, Bam Adebayo is out. That is only going to be for about a week's worth of time. He's dealing with an illness. He is not traveling to Sacramento, I believe, is where we're off to now for the Miami Heat. But this is what we need to address. At first, oh, man, oh, oh man I clicked on the wrong thing. Now, no, 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 no. So, DeMar DeRozan plays the three. He plays the small forward position. Our best player, Jimmy Butler, is our starting small, for small forward. With Jimmy, he can really play the one, the two, or the three, and we've even put him at the four at times due to his ability to defend and rebound. But with Duncan coming back, Duncan played exceptionally well the last time we played. He can play the one or the two, but he's not a great ball handler. Jamie Haquez Jr., our rookie, has been playing lights out as of late. Problem is, he can play the one or the two, maybe even the three. He's listed as our second string 
four, but that is due to the lack of depth at that position. If we bring DeMar in, we cannot put him at the four due to the fact that he is, yes, he is 6'6", yes, he has long arms, but he is not the defender that even Jimmy Butler is, let alone someone like Bam Adebayo against these other forwards. It will not go well for Miami if that's the case. But let's look at what we'd have to give up. We can't give up Kyle Lowry because he does not have a lot of trade value. He's a veteran who does very little in the sense of actually statistical-wise. He's not going to give you 15 to 20 points a game. He's not going to give you 6 to 12 assists a game. And he's not going to give you 5 to 10 rebounds a game. He's going to be there for morale reasons. He's going to play his butt off, but it's not. he's not going to fill the stat sheet. Tyler Hero, we can't move due to the fact that he is injured. And if we were going to move him, it probably would have came at the end of uh, last year or the season before that when he was peaking with trade value. To move him now for an older player with a dated game in the sense of relying on a mid-range rather than the ability to stretch the floor with a consistent three-point shot doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Duncan Robinson, again, three-pointers for two-pointers, younger for older. What are, we, what are we thinking there? I'm thinking that we probably wouldn't move Duncan for DeMar. Now, let's move down. Jimmy Butler, we're not even going to have this conversation. There is not a, a world or a situation or a simulation where we would move Jimmy Butler for DeMar DeRozan. That just would not make sense in any capacity or facet of any type. Caleb Martin, he's a great role player that has played really well for us for the last two years, the last year and up to this point in the season. And he has the ability to stretch the floor along with bringing the ball up the floor as a three. Will we move him? I don't believe we would move him for someone like DeMar. Again, Caleb does a good job at stretching the floor. Not that DeRozan can't, but his three-point shooting is not what his mid-range game is, is what I'll say. Let's go back to the depth report. Uh, Caleb Martin we just covered. And then Jay let's go to the power forward. Hayward Highsmith, again, day-to-day. -day, we can't move him right now due to the fact that he is injured. But would we move him for DeMar DeRozan? Yes, if we're going off of names and what they produce and what they could produce for this team, potentially, in DeMar. Yes, if we're going one-for-one, one, we probably would. Would Chicago do it? Probably not. Again, probably not. They are in shambles. They don't seem to have their head on too perfectly straight right now. But again, I wouldn't leave it up to them to make that trade. I wouldn't for the Miami Heat do the fact of depth. If we got rid of Hayward Highsmith, we'd have to start Jamie Hakez Jr. at the four. Now, if you haven't watched any of his game, could he play the four? Yes. Would we be running a very, very short lineup? Yes. And it, we would be behind the eight ball in a sense when we play teams like Milwaukee, Denver, teams of such of that nature. They would give us serious, serious problems due to the fact that we don't have a lot of depth at the four and the five. So if Bam picks up an early two fouls, or Hayward Highsmith picks up an early two fouls, we are instantly behind the eight ball because now we have to degrade in size. We're going from having like two 6'10 guys to having one 6'10 guy, 6'10 plus, plus guy. And Jamie Hakez Jr. is 6'6". Six, six. He can play, he can bring the ball up the floor. He's not a great facilitator, but he can get it done. Three to five a game, absolutely. But if you want him at the four, you want him at the five, and we have mismatches. If Giannis, if he's guarding Giannis, that is a mismatch for us, and Giannis is probably going to have a field day. I'm not saying Jamie Hakez Jr. can't defend people. They're good players. Giannis is different. And if we don't have the length and the size to defend him, we are going to run ourselves into a problem. We cannot get rid of all of our depth at the four and the five, regardless of whether or not they are role players, starters, or stars. It just you had to have the bodies. It's why it's a big reason why the Los Angeles Lakers this past offseason went out and got a bunch of depth, a bunch of depth at the four, the five, and even the three. They went and got a few. They went and got Gabe Vincent from us. Again, he's not a three, four, or five, but he, he, they did go and get him, who's a bigger guard. They also went and got um, Hayes from New Orleans, a lengthy, lengthy center who's really he's not there to do anything besides dunk and rebound and defend. And he's probably, when we get closer to the playoffs, he will be a body that comes in there. He might even start a few times depending on the matchups. If the Lakers match up with the Denver Nuggets, do not be surprised if you see Jackson Hayes in there very early, even if as a starter, just because fouls can be a problem. And if AD picks up a few and you lose AD, then what do you do? 
Again, losing more and more depth at those positions can be crucial when it comes down to playoffs in these big-time situations when you need size, rebounding, and the ability to defend these elite fours and fives. Jokic, Anthony Davis... These fours and fives will give every team in the National Basketball Association problems if you don't have the size to counter them. Athleticism can get it done, but it can't get it done as consistently, consistency, excuse me, as or excuse me, consistently as just having the size can. So let's move on. If we did go and get him, then yeah, there's no there's no one else we can really move. But if we what if we moved a draft pick, you're probably wondering. Well, these are our upcoming draft picks. We have two first-rounders in 24, one in 24, one in 26. Those are both our, our own in Miami's. Also in 2026, we have a second-round pick from L.A. with no protections, depending on how Los Angeles does in the next two years. And then 27, 28, 29, and 30, we have first-round picks that are all our own. But here's the question I want to ask you as a viewer, as a Miami Heat fan. Not only as myself, but the people I'm speaking to. Would you want to go get a DeMar DeRozan, who, like I told you, 34 years of age, who, yes, has an offensive bag that works and is effective. Yes, he's not a great defender. Okay, He's never been a great defender you know, in all of his career, even his back in his time in Toronto, even in his time at USC in college. He has not been a great defender. Yes, he, he will defend, but he's not Alex Caruso. He's not Jimmy Butler. You know, he's not these guys slapping the floor and accepting the challenge on defense. Now, that will be that's my first question. But would you rather have these upcoming picks with these upcoming prospects, these young up and coming prospects? Or do you want a chance to win now? I I guess you can say a better chance to win now on paper with another star on the roster. Now, before you answer that quickly, think to yourself, does DeMar equal more wins for Miami? Like I told you, is DeMar great offensively? Yes. Do we need the help offensively? We just beat the number one offense in the, in the NBA in the Indiana Pacers by scoring 143 points. I don't know if we really need help offensively. I think we might need a little bit more depth at the four and the five, which DeMar can't play either of. Would we get a great reunion between Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan? Absolutely. I might even shed a tear if it happens. You know why else I'll cry? Because Miami might be putting themselves farther behind the eight ball. And I would not want to see that. I would love to see a reunion. Just not in a Miami Heat jersey. Not right now. Not if we are giving up more of our depth to then add a player who's probably who's definitely going to drop in points because he's not going to come to Miami and average 20 plus like he is in Chicago because we have a lot more great options than Chicago does. If I was Miami and Chicago called, you know, they called up Eric Spolster or Pat Riley and they're like, "Hey, what do you think? We got two available options right now, pretty good players, you know, Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan." I would tell them to stop talking. I'd say there's one player on your entire roster that I would even consider trading anything on our roster for, and his name is Alex Caruso. That is the only person on the entire Chicago Bulls roster I would consider asking about. Why? Because he's going to come and he's going to do his job, and he won't make a big splash in a big disturbance. That's what a splash is, a disturbance in the water, a disturbance on the Miami Heat organization that would affect us neg negatively. Now, if Alex Russo was, if we were able to move someone for the Alex Russo, I know like I just made a big speech about how we're losing depth at the four and the five. I would try our hardest not to move a power forward or a center, but I'd move a draft pick for him. Not a lot of them. I'm not, we're not giving up more than one, maybe even two. But man, if we can get Alex Russo, that is the only player I would be looking for and asking about if I were the Miami Heat when speaking to the Chicago Bulls. That's going to be it for me to covering this topic. If there is a massive move, you will see me again very soon covering that. But look forward to me covering more of the Miami Heat in the upcoming days. We have a game against the Indiana Pacers, I believe. in Or no, excuse me, Toronto. We play Toronto in two days. 
in Toronto uh, until then. You'll probably see me in on the 6th. In two days, you'll see me again doing a preview of that game and what to look for. And if you see me before that, there might be someone else in a Miami Heat uniform. But until then, subscribe to the channel. Stay up to date on all things Miami Heat. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.